Right, let's have a quick look at what we've covered. I um, started by describing interfaces and um, uh, just a very, very brief outline of that. I'll go into more detail about that later on. And um, the reason I did that, of course, is because um, uh, packages can contain interfaces as well as classes, so I thought well, I ought to give you some idea of what they were. Okay. Uh, then there followed a brief overview of packages. Um, Java is really package oriented, so you should use them. Um, and packages are just groups of classes and or interfaces and um, the whole purpose is to prevent names from clashing so you got unique names for classes um, uh, and then of course first line of any source code is the package name and then you've got import statements and then you define um, uh, classes and interfaces uh, separate source files that make up a package they're called compilation units Package names are all lowercase by convention. Uh, what about package names? Well, um, uh, there's a convention here. You reverse the uh, company domain name or corporate if you're American. Um, so you get um, get a unique name basically. Um, and uh, the fully qualified name of any any given package is what any given class rather is. Uh, well, you just stick the uh, package name in front or, or of course uh, um, or interface of course because uh, what I'm saying about classes applies to interfaces in these packages as well um, and that, uh, that makes sure you don't clash um, and um, if you uh, divide up your problem right so you've got people working on the security side of this and other people working on the overnight process and someone else working on the server and you divide it up like that, but with any luck, you won't get named clashes. And that's why they divide it up like this. Inside a package, everything can access everything else. Um, but from from the outside of the package, out, things outside can only get it things which are declared as being public in the package. So uh, that's just uh, worth noting. Um, and um, now for a specific implementation here uh, you're going to have most have only one public class per source file let's put it there, this compiler and um, if there is a public class in the source file the name has got to match the name of the class otherwise it can be anything um, best to have only one class per compilation unit If you want to access a class in another package, um, you can use the fully qualified class name. Um, same, uh, likewise for interfaces. Um, it's uh, more common to use the import statement though, and there are two forms: fully qualified and um, import on demand. Um, every compilation unit um, you supply automatically imports uh, in this package here. Um, so compilation unit source file is laid out like this um, package statement first followed by import statements and um, classes and interfaces uh, names are going to be unique for um, classes and interfaces and you can't have a situation where a class and a package fully qualified class name and a, a package name can be confused as well it's not allowed um, you have to be careful here with Windows. Um, uh, Windows, of course, doesn't distinguish between case. It's case insensitive, and um, Java compiler isn't. Uh, specific detail about the standard Java compiler. Um, it stores stuff in a hierarchy like this uh, for its classes, and um, it expects a source to be in a hierarchy like that as well, generally good idea too. Um, uh, by default uh, the compiler puts class files into the same directory as the source but you can make it go somewhere else just by using the minus D option. Um, how you uh, get around typing specific uh, names that are not easy to put in. Um, about the unnamed package as well um, has very kind of depends on the particular system and host dependent stuff and things like that best avoided um, 
Uh, now, um, Java packages and stuff can be stored in a, a database instead of this uh, hierarchical file system. So, as you can see, it's quite different. So, this is all kind of implementation detail around here. So, you have to be a bit careful about that. It depends on your system. Um, sub packages. Um, uh, package names are regarded as basically being atomic. You can't sort of split them up. Um, so therefore if they're different, uh, they might as well be totally different as far as Java is concerned. Um, you don't get any extra privileges for being half right. Um, and when you import, do when you do this um, uh, import on demand, it's uh, of course not recursive. It only imports from that package and nothing else. Uh, what about if you get a class name clash with something that's imported? Well. It's, uh, you get a compiler error if it's a fully qualified name you're importing, but not if it's import on demand. And um, it shows you that import on demand is not the same thing as as um, a fully qualified import for each of the uh, cl public classes. Because if you, if it was, um, you'd end up with a compiler error, but you don't in this case. So they're not actually equivalent. There's a bit of a subtle distinction there. Uh, static imports, um, uh, you write it like this, import static. A lot of people don't like it, including me. Um, it can lead to some very bad code. Uh, you have to specify a class name here, no, not a package name. Class name. And if you do that, it imports every single static member, whether that's a variable or a method. And that can cause confusion and difficulty. So you have to be careful about that. Well, um, don't use uh, static imports basically unless it's well justified. Um, and by that I mean that um, it's obvious uh, what it is and where it is and it's used frequently. And by obvious I mean obvious not to the programmer who's writing it, but uh, to any programmer who comes afterwards to debug it. That's the important thing. Then it might possibly be justifiable, otherwise best avoided. Um, and uh, that's about it, I think. Uh, right, this is about the last word that can be said on packages, I think. Um, maybe I could say a little bit more about static imports, but I don't think it's probably a good idea. It would only encourage people to use it too much. Um, uh, there's quite a bit more I want to say about interfaces. There's a lot to say about interfaces, and a lot more to say about classes as well. I haven't discussed abstract classes yet. They're just a special type of class. And um, of course nested classes as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, next thing I think I want to do is uh, flow control and arrays. That's probably the next best thing to do, I think. So we want to see some code. Yeah, I think I'll do flow control and arrays next. That's nice and simple.